That's the smooth jazz version. Da, 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 da. <laughs> we do the raw fuck version. Wow. We do the gospel get down, look at Jesus version. And we got the smooth jazz version. Good morning. Welcome to Community Voice. I'm your host, Keith Paris. I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Brother Jermaine, good morning, sir. Good morning, there, sir. Good morning. Soon not to be young Carvey. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Months and some days. Yep. Yeah. And uh huh? Still wet behind his ears. He's yeah. still wet behind. Yeah, you legal yet, son? <laughs> he said he's gonna be grown. He's gonna be grown. He grown now. He gonna be grown now. He gonna be grown now. Grown now. And uh, grown-er. welcome back to the city. Um thank you. Miss Michelle Bryant. And I, I just want to tell you, I could not wait to see you. Why is that? The LSU comment from the coach when she got at the sports writers Mm -hmm. who um, talked about um, the LSU players and Mm -hmm. and referred to them as dirty debutantes and, and the, the sexist misogynistic comments by the sports writer. That's the LA times article, right? Yeah. Did you read the Washington post article on her? Uh, No, I did. And what did it say? Oh, Moki is about Moki. Well, I mean, because she said, I talked about they were going to do a hit piece on her. So she was very upset about that. It wasn't. It, but she said I, she but was going to sue, but she had nothing to sue on. But that still doesn't, doesn't, you know, like I can't, I can't jump to what her drama is and not pay attention to what she was, the point she was making about how they were talking about those young female athletes. Right. And it was inappropriate. You know, and like they said, Google dirty debutantes, figure out what that means. You describe one team as all American apple pie. What team might that be? I'm not I'm not mentioning Iowa. <laughs> and so, Caitlin, Caitlin yeah, so, Clark. so who does that look like? And then you talk. I mean, it, it reminded me of uh, Howard Stern and the nappy headed hoes comment. The Rutgers that's team. The, that's, Vivian that's, Stringer. that's what it sounded like. Yeah. And so when I as soon as I saw the story, but you know, what's said, real interesting, keeps. though. When she had that press conference, yeah, those girls was pressed. They were pressed. She she had them looking very differently when they did the press conference. Well, number one, I mean, that shouldn't even matter. It shouldn't. It should not matter. And and that's the thing that pissed me off with men is that like, just just give deference to the fact that we talk about these women athletes in very different ways than we talk about yeah. how men show up. Mm-hmm. Men can show up looking crazy and as raggedy as the day is long. It does yes. not garner a lot of conversation. It shouldn't. It, it, it should. <laughs> it's a man's world. I just got that. <laughs> and I'm going to jail. I just got that. I just got that. For real, for real. You in it? You in it? Uh, it's that kind of role. Again, right the, now? the free, the if yeah, you want to be part of the free Michelle Bryant fund, <laughs> you call four one four four four. <laughs> we are taking her bail buddy right now, so we're trying to raise some bail buddy. And I knew, I said, when I talked to him, I wanted to talk to you, and I said, and he gonna make me mad. I knew you was gonna do. It. I hear you. I uh, Carvey is not <laughs> registered yet. Still. Yeah, Carvey, we gotta do that. Still. You know what? Don't come in here with a fresh haircut. Tell about can I go tomorrow? Ooh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Instant replay. That's what he did last, last time. time. <laughs> well, you want to get his hair did? You want to get your hair did, uh, man? He came in here fresh. He had a big show that night. <laughs> he, was, he was dipped and whipped. Harvey. That cat was clean and mean. Don't bring your behind here. You have never registered to vote. Well, I did take my godson, so maybe one of us need to take him. I yeah, took my godson. <laughs> he said, yeah, well, but well, he, he might as well wait till tomorrow him. now. Well, he got to. You can't vote today. He yeah, can go right, get registered. He can register, but you might as well wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Will the uh, station give him time off to go vote? Legally. You can have time yeah. off to You're go and to. register to vote. I yeah. will work what? with cameras, whatever I need to do, but he needs to get registered. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, no. Who going to take very it? important. Keep taking it. <laughs> well, I just happen to be busy. <laughs> 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 keep yeah, keep taking it. Yeah, keep taking it. Where you vote? We need to find out where you vote. That's terrible. We get this information. But I'm going to be honest with you, Carvey. At 18, put, put I wasn't registered to vote. W-I. Yeah, I, I didn't put register to vote until I was 19. I, uh, that was one of the first things I ran to do was be able to vote. Wow. Well, yeah. Something I wanted to do. And I think we should be hitting these high schools yeah. to register the 18-year-olds. Yeah. 
I, I believe it. Devo, I did, I Devo said vote. he he rushed to you know, vote. One who, one who, I mean, you uh, had marched in the civil rights, though, right? <laughs> oh my God, she yeah. got jokes. I was right there next to Grappy. <laughs> <laughs> she, she got jokes. Right there with Grappy. No, so what was the sixties like, Debo? Uh, <laughs> I can tell you about the sixties, Keith, but I was just wondering what was it like, you know, at at, at, at Jesus graduation? What was it like right there when, was that Jesus graduation? He ran out of wine, but it wasn't a problem. <laughs> oh man, it wasn't a problem. They ran out of wine, but he took care of that little thing. So he yeah. yeah. water. <laughs> no, he, he, took made, the water. He, made, he made him some wine. Use the water he had. They ran out of wine. So, Stop it. Stop yeah, they it, did. They it. ran out of wine. <laughs> read, read the story. <laughs> read the story. His mama came to me and said, we got a problem. Read I thought they said, I thought the they, said they, they turned the water into wine. He did turn the water into wine, but why did he need to do that? Because they ran out of wine. So, oh, okay. And you okay. you was raised in the church. You didn't, I, I knew know, that. But I knew they turned water into wine, but he said, you, know you weren't paying attention said, to the whole sermon? Because they ran out of wine. They... I got five of them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what, you, what you got, Mano? <laughs> I'm not in it <laughs> at all. Are you a PK? Yeah, I am. Yeah. But to get Are back you? to you, uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad is is a pastor. Oh, I mean, I was I born and raised in there, so. You know, I strayed away. I was, you know, I was the white sheep at first, and then, and, the <laughs> so anyway, and then I became that black sheep. And then right now, I'm, you know, I'm kind of tan right now. So you, you working your way back? Yeah, I'm working my way back to okay, okay. to being awesome. clean as hyssop. Awesome, mm. awesome time at the Easter Bash yesterday. Yeah, the Easter Bash Jermaine was awesome. Was he okay. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I made my what was the uh, superstar. Michelle, I miss uh, it. The what? Michelle Pitt. The oh, Soul Storm. I, I miss it. My feet got light. Who was a headliner? Oh man, Canton Spiritual. Can, yeah, Canton Spiritual. Oh, oh yeah, Harvey, it was Harvey Watkins in the man. Was it was there? heavy in there. Oh yeah, Harvey was there. The gospel stick up in there. Oh, it was heavy. Okay. Bishop okay. Neil Robeson. Yeah. Chitlin juice everywhere. It was Listen here. Great, great <laughs> it was a. I don't know how y'all was awake for the show. That's <laughs> that's what still. It was. It was rough getting going. It was I bet it was. was. You did not say chitlin juice. Yeah. And I, every year I make the disclaimer because they have any kind of bean you could imagine. If you know you can't handle them beans. Oh uh, yeah, don't yeah, because you're gonna be sitting there for a minute. Y'all know what that movie is, don't you? When you're tipping out, just get on out of here, please. <laughs> Do not disrespect the service like that. <laughs> great, great time as, as usual. The, 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 New Pitch Mortuary put together a great gospel Easter bash. We were looking for Pastor Keith. Uh, fake Jacob wasn't in the building. Fake Jacob was uh, with his family yesterday. Really? I am exhausted, man. I had to clean that house because my family was coming. And, you and ain't clean no house. I did clean You did not your clean. Your wife And your house is already clean. No, it wasn't. What? You let I'm telling you what's by. happening in my house. What's I, today, April 1st? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> There's my quarter for the phone. And she's getting ready to go to jail already. She See? Uh, we're raising bail money for Keith. <laughs> Oh man. Ain't nobody gonna he, bail he, you he out. Gonna be there Everybody gonna come, come get me. Why won't he come get me? <laughs> hey, baby, I'm down here. Well, I know. Not on, uh, I'm not ready to cash at me, my bill money. Sermon and Capital selling hot dog water to get Keith up out of here. Yeah, <laughs> about, you know, like you put the hot dog in the water and you take the hot dog out and you sell the water. And what you do with the hot dog? I it's up to you. That's like, so nasty. <laughs> whatever, whatever you choose, dog. brother. That's so you. I have never heard. It. That's the that's hot the that's the man, not, thing I have ever heard in my hey, life. Hey man, put some lorries in it, man. Put some lorries. Uh -oh. Hot dog water. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Man, I was thinking about you, man. I was doing chicken, <laughs> and you mentioned fried chicken. That man, put some lorries on that. Sound like you know something about poverty. Like you know something about poverty, man. Second the Taliban. Where's Kia? What's it called? Second of Taliban. Hook cheese. Hook cheese. Hook cheese. I was watching y'all this morning. I wanted a piece of that hook man, cheese. It's almost no. gone. I don't know who been eating it. Kim. Oh, man. Kia. What'd you say? What'd you say? Uh, it's, Carolyn A. It's actually good. But Kia just walking around with it. And, yeah, just 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 break it off. <laughs> Dude, you can't you can't slice it. You gotta break it. We think it's called hoof cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I got them hands of a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> He's just breaking it off raw. I like. Ugh. But to get back to your original point, I agree. The way that women are covered are very different than men are. They're dealing with parody tonight. That oh, yeah. game on ESPN gonna is going to oh, yeah. go Everybody through the rating roofs, man. Because be you know, because number one, we're looking for the, the two personalities, which gets us to Dr. Jill Biden. Can both teams come? 
Yeah, but you see they shut her down quick on that. Oh, uh, have we ever had both teams come? Yeah. Come yeah. On, oh, when the little white girl lose, can both teams come? You know, and and again, not giving deference to the fact that she is a, is, a, is is the trash talker. Oh, she right. Is. Yeah, she is the right. trash she, talker. Yeah, she she. You know, like her yeah. and Kobe could have kicked it. Like she is the trash talker. You know who talked a lot of trash? Who? Larry Bird. Oh yeah, they say Larry Bird talks so much Which is trash. It's amazing because he doesn't seem like he's like a guy, but he, 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 he was trash. Indiana talk trash like that. Yeah. He seemed like you know just Man. running the mill. Let me drop my threes. Who, I, I'm trying to think. My, was it uh, Dale Harris was coaching? It could have been Dale Harris. It could have been Nelly. But they put yeah, Fred Roberts. Yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. On the Riddles playing the Bucks. Yeah. Yeah, they put Fred put Roberts. Fred Roberts on and he come by the bench going, Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> he, he put Fred Roberts on me. You <laughs> disrespect him <laughs> that much. Oh, they put man. Fred on. They put man. Fred. I remember that. Fred Roberts. They put Brad Lohaus on him. Nobody get hold of him. And he was torching us so bad. It's like he would, I mean, from the corner. He'll just fade from the corner. Yeah, bah, he was called. Torching us. <laughs> Larry? Yeah, you what? got to hear said, Michael you Cooper. Me. He said Michael Cooper said he talked so much trash to me, and then he do it. Yeah, he was crazy. Tell me what he's gonna do, and then he do it. Looks right nothing the like that. Like nobody would believe nobody, me if nobody. you didn't. If you know you didn't mm-hmm. hear from the players and sales, mm-hmm. nobody would believe. They said, and I'm like, but, but like Caitlyn looked like she talked trash. She do. And she she looked like she talked trash. Like you, and you can see her. Yeah. What was that I missed the other day? Didn't she get? Catch a real bow or something the other day. Oh, they've they was... been beating up on her. Yeah. yeah. That's how you gotta stop her, man. Yeah. You gotta man. Look, but LSU tonight, I I I just I just think and everybody's talking about Caitlin Clark and nobody's talking about South Carolina. There you go. Oh South yeah. Carolina looks like one of the best teams, men or I mean, women, I've I mean, yeah. ever seen. Yeah, South Carolina. Now you lose good. five of your starters yeah. from last year's team that yeah. went to the finals, right? Yeah. And you come back but with you five. know what the the bench was deep though. The well, bench was deep. Well, Pow Pow has really been the difference. I'm just saying, That though. little girl can. I shouldn't say it. That little woman can play some basketball. Yeah. <laughs> These women can play. Now, there's a little sister playing for, oh, man, she played for Baylor. She must be 5'2". Her last name is Williams. Jada. They couldn't stop her. Oh, wow. All right, because, you know, I haven't been able to see oh, much man, of nothing. I've, I've been watching that. So before. I'm so ecstatic to finally. For all you Mark Kettle um, North Carolina State must be legit. Because not oh, only yeah. they beat you, they beat Duke yeah. last night. So yeah. they might be on a later one, what, 10 straight or something like that? 11 so, straight. 11 straight? Yeah. Well, all I know I'm is like everybody going to be in the house tonight or in front of a TV. I know I am. Um, and yeah. the women's game See, is look so at strong. that. Look at that. They, they, and I think it's good. I think that uh, Caitlin Clark has made a whole lot of money. Oh, yeah. Because so okay. they were showing her prime How time. How come the WNBA is so unsuccessful? <sighs> well, hmm. That's a good question. Really? I'll, I'll wait. Is it My, a good it's, great, it's a great product. I mean, when you watch those women play, they play. How did I open the conversation? Because it's subsidized by the NBA. It's How did I open the conversation? The Sexism? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Think, Young Carver. I think it's, it's less successful than the NBA because the girls can girls? physically do what males can do. They can dunk like we can. <coughs> well, well, can dunk. Dunk. well, well, well not to Candace, dunk. Candace Parker could dunk. Lisa Leslie could dunk. Yeah. But but they're playing. The thing about the women, though, Carby, is they're playing on the same. They play in the same dimensions as the men. They don't lower the rim for women. They're playing on a ten foot rim, just like men are. In college, they shoot from the same three point line as men. So when you're looking at what women are doing, it is what uh, uh, Ginger Rogers used to say about dancing with Fred Astaire. I did all the steps he did backwards. In In heels, heels, backwards. backwards. So women, I think that is hard to catch on because you can, um, for men anyway, you don't identify with women. I mean, like. I identify with Kobe. I'm a dude. And you. And you got to also think about too, like every player in the, in the NBA is not slamming down dunks, is not doing windmills. You know, like you just got some straight up shooters, and you know, you know they good for a three, just straight up shooters. People get just as, as excited about those players as they do the cast with all the fancy footwork and you know the ball handling Plus skills. The women play the game. So, you they know, play the game. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think I a lot of it is sexism that they oh, don't yeah. value what women do. The women's soccer team. Yeah. Like, which has arguably been more successful than the men, and they still can't get paid. And you playing that game the exact same. Right. And with me and him and those, what was it, 99? They called them the 99ers, yeah. 98 99ers, when they won the World Cup, 
Every place they played, they sold out. We're talking 60, 70,000 seat arenas. But it I mean, was just stadiums. like when the little girl, I, I thought I smiled about that. I always think about that. Um, was it Steph Curry? When the little girl wrote Steph Curry and she was like, so how come I can't get your shoes for me and I'm a hooper? Mm. And, you know, Steph Curry and them had to come back and redesign their shoes because he was like, I got dogs. Yeah, but that. yeah, you yeah. remember the little girl got that Steph? She was like, and I'm the coolest thing on my team. Yeah. But I can't get your shoes. You know, you ain't got these shoes for girls. Like, what's up with that? It's a complete, I'm sorry, disrespect when it comes to our abilities. Like, it's like, okay, we a warm-up show. We the Harlem Globetrotters. Mm. But we not. And if you pay attention to the Harlem Globetrotters, they actually are cold. Yeah. These, these are some of the coldest players. players right? right. But we we entertain it. We not the, the real. And let us not forget we the warm -up. Lynette Woodard, the first woman to play with the Harlem Globetrotters. Young Carby. I know you all keep mentioning like sexism. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, isn't like our sex is what identifies us? So, like, like of course, like we don't like certain things. Carby, do me a favor, just come get to the mic, man. Come here, come to the mic, because you know, because you're, you're getting ready winded with this. Right. You already start some controversy. Okay, so, so I'm more Carby be reporting here. So. <laughs> 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 we keep uh I, I keep hearing them mention sexism and I just feel like you know sex is sex our sex is what divides us. So I feel like if we have different things and different qualities that you know determine But you gotta make we, sure you understand the definition of sexism. Right, because I it's, don't okay, so yeah. So, <laughs> so, 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 don't. <laughs> so that's it right there. But you will. Yeah. But you will. We'll give you a break. <laughs> we will tell you what the definition of racism is, and when you come back, you sexism. Can say that sexism, which is an uh, ism. Yeah, it right. is, it yeah. is. You listen to Community Voices Monday. Phone lines open. 414-444-5252. We're going to take a quick break. Right now. Okay. Hey, Milwaukee, this is Mandela Barnes. You probably know me as the former lieutenant governor, but I'm also a proud product of Milwaukee Public Schools and a proud son of a Milwaukee Public School teacher. And that's why I'm supporting Yes for MPS. We have strong public schools. We have strong communities. We have a strong workforce. And everyone can succeed. For years, We've seen Republicans in the legislature continue to fail Milwaukee students by withholding resources that force devastating cuts to our schools. This referendum is our chance to stand up for our kids and provide them with the opportunities they deserve and say yes to their futures when so many have told them no. If the referendum fails, consequences for our children, our parents, our educators, and for the future of our city will be dire. So let's do our part, Milwaukee. Join me in voting yes for MPS on April 2nd. Paid for by the Vote Yes for MPS Committee. On April 2nd, Milwaukee Public Schools is asking you to vote for a permanent 30% property tax increase. At a time when Milwaukee families are feeling the pinch financially, it's the wrong time for a tax increase. Students and families deserve accountability. We need a comprehensive plan from MPS with real solutions, not just a new tax. Vote no to 30% on April 2nd. Paid for by CFC Action Fund as an in-kind contribution to Enough is Enough. Vote no. Increasing taxes while families are paying more for everything from gas to groceries is wrong. Milwaukee voters should oppose increase in property taxes by nearly 30% in order to provide increased funding yet again to Milwaukee Public Schools. They've already wasted nearly $1 billion in new taxpayer funding, and now they want more? They don't even have a plan on how they'll spend it. Enough is enough. Milwaukee voters should just say no. Paid for by Enough is Enough. Vote no. 
Are you ready to take your self-care routine to new heights? Introducing Bird Songs, your one-stop destination for all natural body essentials. Now open at our brand new location, 7123 West Greenfield Avenue. That's 7123 West Greenfield Avenue. Come check out an extensive collection of body oils, shea butter, soaps, hydrating lotions, refreshing shower gels, and enchanting incense. For more information, please visit birdsongsonline.com. Milwaukee, we are about to enter one of the most important election seasons of our lives. 2024 is going to be pivotal. Here at WNOV, we work to ensure that our listeners are informed, knowledgeable, and engaged. On Tuesday, April 2nd, tune in from 3 to 8 p.m. for another edition of Election Central. Hear from candidates, discuss ballot referendums, and get real-time election updates and report problems throughout the course of the day. We are ready, and you should be too. Election Central on WNOV 860 AM 106.5 FM, sponsored by Souls to the Pulse. You're listening to WNOV 860 and W293CX 106.5 Milwaukee. Welcome back to Community Voice. And uh, sexism is, how would you define it, Michelle? Would it be male supremacy? Um, It is actions taken against women just based on their gender. Would that be negative actions? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, literally that sums it up, that you receive disparate or inequitable treatment based on gender and nothing more. Um, And when we talk about everything from pay equity to promotions in the workplace. Um, Again, how athletes are paid. When you talk about these women, particularly, I remember soccer, you're selling out arenas at a pace more than the men Mm -hmm. and your record is better than the men, but you are receiving, you know, 50%, 60% of what men make. And Mm -hmm. right now in America, even white women make 78 cents on the dollar for every $1 a man makes a white woman and Asian women are really the highest paid um, of all women. But nobody, we, Keith and I both come to work every day. We do the exact same job and I'm, you know, way colder. We do the exact same job. And yet Keith makes, you know, a dollar and I get as a black woman, 64 cents to his, to his dollar. Was you stuck on I was way colder? Because your face looked a little disturbed. You all right? <laughs> I, I was I was gonna be an ally, but you didn't just <laughs> well, it was it was for it was for you know aesthetics. It wasn't like a real comment, it was just for oh, aesthetics. It was pretty close to what we get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I do get 64 cents. Oh my god, <laughs> to your dollar. I do well, I think I it's do. reversed because <laughs> she she is the star. Of of this station, whatever. And I am number five. You know what? Don't spare me your humbleness. <laughs> spare, spare, spare me your fake humbleness, <laughs> Mister Press Pass. Uh-oh. Trying to hear that garbage. So yeah, Carvey, you got to understand that is disparate or differential treatment, which typically is negative or harmful based on the sex of a person. Which is. It, <sighs> So like, you got to come back to the mic. Yeah, come so to the mic, man. No dead air. I figure, I figure it's like it's it's like whatever is favorable for for that gender. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel that 
sexism is something that is that was made i don't feel like it, that that's be, correct i don't feel like that should be you know what i'm saying something that should be snapped that's not something i agree with but do you think men and women are equal um i think they're we are different but are we equal we can be different and equal um I think we. You better answer. You better answer right. This is my baby. Your beards. That it just depends. No, no, wrong answer. Listen, listen, listen. Because you know, of course, a man, of course, a man will be more, um, will be more, um. Man, forget. No, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What you gonna say? <laughs> Warriors, come out and play. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 you gonna learn, man? You don't step into that day. one. Oh, you gonna learn the day? Hey, as soon as he said it was wrong, he said, he said, but. <laughs> Well, maybe I can try to help you. But, you know, the, maybe he was trying to say, like, as far as, you know, men and women doing doing the same job or something like that. Like, you know, the men are stronger than women. Physical. Physically. But everybody's equal. Everybody's equal. I mean, that's the whole different part in men and women. And, and, would, and, and it would be stuff. arguing that in some, some aspects – Biologically, women are stronger. Well, yeah. We might have like the testosterone yeah. where you get the muscles. Yeah, yeah. But ask a woman who's yeah. delivered a baby. Yeah. Talk yeah. tough it. And yeah. I mean, even if That's you don't true. just do that, carry a baby. Mean, that you know, like, I think about when it comes to employment, though, there are not very many jobs that differentiate based on you know strength. Mm -hmm. Because if you are a female firefighter, you got to be able to carry the same amount of weight as a male firefighter. You know, you got to be able to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I, when I watched this man over here in, was it Glendale, who Molly Wapped, slept, smacked that, that police officer, female police officer, and grabbed her by her ponytail. Did you see that? That happened, like, before I left last week. Okay. This white guy in one of these, either Shorewood or Glendale, uh, was threatening his, his wife, woman, whoever had called the police, and left the phone off the hook so you could hear him threatening to kill her. And when the police show up, one of the police officers is a female. He grabs the, the female police officer's ponytail and, like, put her in a chokehold and take her to the ground. You know, and it was so crazy. He and wasn't shot? He wasn't shot. Oh, yeah, he wasn't shot. And then not only because when the police came, he had his gun in his hand sitting on the porch. He wasn't shot. You heard what I said. Protection of And then they let him go back in the house with the woman who had called. But when I saw him handle that police officer that way, I was like, yeah, that wasn't a good look for female officers. Yeah. You know, because he grabbed, and I like, I even thought they had some rule about how they had to wear their hair. But he grabbed her ponytail and took her straight to the ground. And even in the, uh, who's my guy down in Kenosha? Um, I can't think of my guy's name, but it started right in Kenosha. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse? Kyle Rittenhouse. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, you, uh, the guy, the brother. Right. Remember, the cop couldn't hold him. He because he was trying to grab at his t-shirt. Well, at first he had him. He the dude yeah, broke away from broke him. Away. So yeah. physically, you can have yeah, you folks. can have male cops, and then uh, you know you can have males that you know are not physically adept at these jobs either. You know, you just look like you could do. Something. But here's what's interesting, because how the the economy has evolved for the last fifty years. When you look at the work that's being done now, women are better suited, not physically, but because of where they were working. They were working in offices. They were doing. So now we're doing more of a service economy, you know, in terms of convenience and things like that. And there are more women in college than men right now. Yeah, yeah. that was. Yeah. Uh, and it, so it. it but like I said, there are very few jobs that there's right. a differential in terms of male, female, just on, on, on brute strength alone. Um, it just and, you know, because the other thing I thought you were going to say is with the advent of technology, a lot of things that in terms of labor is even different. different you know, I, I can just run the computer now 
instead of working on that factory line the way men had to and women had to back in the day. And then remember, when everybody went to war, when all the men went to war, women was able to run this country. What's her name? Um, the the Riveter. Riveter. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. know, but y'all should have, you know, been throwing some black women's pictures up there too to my Rosie the Riveter. Sisters was already out in the fields working like a man. And that's the funny thing too, because when we start talking about women's abilities, it only comes up when you talk about white women's abilities. Because if historically black yeah. women were expected to work like black men, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared about you being. Oh, you ever been out in the field? Yeah. And, and well, no. I mean, no, I haven't. <laughs> but, I told you, you I chopped cop one day. You know, and half the people out there chopping yeah. were female. But people didn't. They didn't put that qualifier on that she's a female, mm -hmm. and so the expectation for her output is different in some way. We we didn't we don't get that treatment. So that's why you know the the losing team was going to come to the White House. Well, they both were just such great competitors. Yeah. Oh, Jill. She got Jill, smacked. Don't walk into that. She got smacked that, back. That, All right, uh, I'm going to get out your way. Right, Have well, a great welcome, show. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank uh, you'll, you. You'll get with me later. Let me know about my. I will. My obligations. Tomorrow. Yes. Five star host. I will do the that. Number five guy. Yeah. <laughs> so get I'll you, be. Good job, boy. You get a chance to hear me doing commercial breaks. <laughs> 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 That's like a preacher being invited to church when we talk about this to yeah. do the benediction. Yeah. Dog, I'm gonna get you over here. I need you to do the benediction for me. Now you can work a benediction. Though. Oh yeah. It's the final blessing. Yeah, uh, you go to church. church uh, uh, Did you go to church? Take us home. I'm sorry, what? Easter. After what was it, six days? With them kids, with those kids. Boy, yeah. I went to bed. <laughs> said that I you, really got you something said, to eat. You sound like my and wife. I went to bed. I had aged out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Gosh, I, I was looking at Keisha like you got you twenty years younger than me. I tapped right on out <laughs> on the trip, like man. And I was saying, I know you, and you doing the logistics, so yeah. get everybody in the rooms. And, and, then, and you know, I had to be like the the, the, Who's the, the disciplinarian. I'm the mama. Okay, you know, like ah, uh, okay. stop. You know, don't do that. And so they was all hating me because, you know, I was like, hey, 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 we ain't doing that. Today. But maybe you shouldn't look like uh, I'm sorry, it's Jacob Blake. Uh, oh, yeah, thank thank you. you. Uh, don't look like you were enjoying it too much. Well, I have fun. I hate to tell this story because we talk about kids going on retreat. I'll, I'll get your call. I'm coming to you. Uh, but I was telling you about Lorraine Lathan and I. We had uh, taken some kids up to Green Lake for a retreat. Yeah. Uh, what a crazy Green three Lake. days. Yeah. Oh, my God. What a crazy three days. So one of the little girls got had a stomach she got up she got sick so she came out in the hallway and we know she's sick and i think they're trying to get her to the bathroom and she threw up <laughs> lorraine didn't come out in the hallway and they say little girl throw up they throw up <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Uh... look at that little girl throwing up so i'm gonna tell you youth retreats when you're taking young people um the energy that is required oh my god I mean, because you're constant vigilance. Now, the good thing was it was all girls. Mm -hmm. Now, you got boys and girls. Now, you got a whole different, especially teenagers and above, because whew, we got hormones going on. And uh, the, Well, I'm going to tell you, the, the group out of California, um, like I said, it was three schools, 150 kids. And, you know, you had your characters, you know, because we were a part of uh, some of the stuff with them. But those some of those was just the most memorable young people. Some of the boys were blowing me away. Mm -hmm. You know, the holding doors, the yes, ma'am. I'm like, out of California, we got yes, ma'ams. Um, and so I don't know if they have people from the south in their family, but I was really, you know, and I'm and I and I told I told the girls this on our tour. Um, I said, look, because you know, these kids are so caught up in how they look. And, you know, every mirror we walk by, you got to stop and stare in the mirror and adjust your hair and do this and do that. And, you know, we said the things that people are going to judge you on and that's going to advance you in life, the how you look is going to be the least of it. Because um, when you start talking about work and performance, mm -hmm. pretty don't take you that far on work and performance. It helps. I mean, it might help you get in the door. But when it's time, when, when other hours. people's jobs, and I, hate, I don't know what pretty is, but if when other people's jobs are contingent upon you knowing what you're doing, you, you can be pretty all day. You're gonna be pretty over there, <laughs> and so you know, trying to tell people that your attitude is also what people see, mm -hmm. and people make decisions on who gets promoted, who gets a scholarship, who gets to come. Sometimes 
whole attitude. And one of the little girls said, she said, if you one point away from an A or B or B or C, one of the things that that professor is rolling back in their mind is your attitude. I'll engage for you. Yeah. And they'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Like, you know what? That's a good kid. So, so, so give it to let me get this straight. Mm -hmm. So girls still have attitudes today. Let I know me tell they you something. In my day. I'm so glad I have a son. I don't know what to do. Wow. And I would like to think that if I had had a daughter, she wouldn't be tripped out. But the look of the draw says she probably would be. Because when girls get around other girls, they get real special. But you know, it's interesting. That's the argument people make for segregated education, boys and girls. Yeah. That especially for girls when it comes to math and science, because they think that boys don't like smart girls. So they will defer. Um, and that's why, you know, when you go and you see now when it's all girls and they're in uniform, but you feel you still find a way to differentiate because they're gonna do it on hair, they're gonna do it on shoes. Yeah, you know, you still get all that that garbage. But the one thing I'll say before I walk out the door that I was so proud of and that blew me away on this trip was the number of black folks in STEM that were the scientists, the doctors. Mm. We ran into some of the baddest people moving, or when we were walking through the halls of the schools. I'm trying to think of which school we were at, and they had everybody that had become a doctor um in a out of they, they their school and this hallway is this long hallway and you just see this array of black faces on both sides young and old going back to 1939 and it's just like all of these are doctors i mean it was just it just blew me away and you mentioned lemoyne owen and uh amaris my niece uh -huh. her husband is a graduate of, oh really yeah he's studying to be a pilot right now really yeah. Uh, I had a classmate who was there back in the day, uh, right there in Memphis. So. Well, I was proud when I realized that that was Lloyd Barbie's um, alma mater. It, it just, it was cool. It was cool. Are there two Xaviers in New Orleans? Yes. Okay. A white Xavier and a right because Mitch Landrew went to the white Xavier. Right. Had a chance to talk to him. There was we were talking. You know, had a few minutes, and so he was uh, talking about. I don't know how we got on health disparities. And he said, yeah, you know, because when you get the sugar and uh, Brenda, <laughs> I had the uh, had the, the, the nurses in and they died because that's what black people yeah, call got diabetes, sugar. got sugar. He yeah. said, you got the sugar. He said, that's what you call it, don't you? <laughs> and he sounded just like he's what doing. That's what we call it, sugar, the sugar. Yeah, no, nah, and like, the you know, don't mess up and say Xavier because I did that a couple of times and I know it's Xavier, but I said Xavier. And everybody jumped on me. I was like, okay, y'all, my bad. I'm sorry. I forgot all about Diller. Yeah, Diller. I'm telling you, like, the schools, um, so my, oh, we have Kennedy in 5K STEM Academy this summer. Oh, yeah, and there is one to, program. She goes to Geek Camp. I have got to make sure, and I'll talk about it after the election, but there is a program that one of the colleges does that they bring kids in. It's all STEM related. Mm -hmm. You come down, room and board. They pay you a stipend. It's all free all summer you got to commit to the whole summer though and you know they trying to get black kids from all over the country to come and so i i got to make sure i send your kids to geek camp i mean you know you you can um uh, send your kids to geek camp uh, we sent um frankie to marquette's engineering geek, geek camp yeah. when he was i think he could have been in grade school Maybe he was down. I think Cameron went. Yeah, too. I made sure my son did all STEM related stuff. Yeah. UWM had they a boss got the whole program. whole summer to play. And, uh, and then you always had that learning loss during the summer. Yeah. Those two and a half months are out of school. No, I mean, if you do any of the UWM pre college programs at Marquette, we ran into upper bound students all at every campus, just about. We ran into the students from upper bound. We saw the upper bound offices, and we had one student from upper bound in our cohort and she was so excited. She was like, is that my upper bell? You know, and so it was an immediate connection. But, um, and the only other thing, again, I will say is just that my frustration listening to a lot of these kids coming from these predominantly white faculty led schools that are non-public schools trying to discourage these kids from going to HBCUs. That was, I heard that from kids, from other kids from other schools on the tours and from students. And that was really working my nerves that they really, um, and they tried to, to do it based on either um, as um, Rochelle, the sister that's running for judge said, told her family they couldn't afford it. Oh, but wait, I did not know how much it cost to go to Xavier. Oh my God. 
Mm. Like when I tell you, you could have bought two houses, like $200,000 level houses. And some of these, these kids and they unrealistic expectations about where they think they're getting ready to go to school. Cause I'm like, if you don't get a scholarship for academic ride, who drop in $45,000, $50,000 a year? Cause these are private institutions. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that number at Howard University, that's a real number. People, like, so when I was seeing running well, into Howard schools, need to step up. Those folks, because the issues they're dealing with at Howard right now, um, and I don't know if they resolved that issue in terms of what the dormitories were looking like. But, I mean, you know. And one of the frustrations I had, now I'm, I'm home. It goes with the changed. territory. I, like, I'm just sorry, but. Most black colleges are underfunded. Right. They right. don't, the alumni, all these people that brag about going to HBCUs who don't give back to those schools, who don't send a check, who don't do anything but do the alumni class of 64 clock, the, the class of 72 bitch, you know, like do some real stuff. <laughs> yeah, they do this nonsense. The class like, of 72, <laughs> name on the bathroom door. Yeah, exactly. So generously you know, donated the, by the class the, the of 72. The water fountain that was donated by the class of 89. <laughs> like, do, do some real. <laughs> Can we buy some books? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do some real, you know, so Feel like. That. They are they are woefully underfunded. These people are struggling. What I've noticed is that the girls' dorms, they always try to at least make sure the girls are fine. The boys get treated horribly. You know, like, y'all men, rough it. We're going to at least try to take care of these girls. But the one thing I saw as a result of that COVID money, school after school, the improvements that were being made, phenomenal. Like, there were two kids on our tour. When they got to Alcorn, they couldn't believe that campus. I'm talking about they doing the thing and you could see how that money was going back. Russ College was doing a good job. of So COVID was a mixed blessing because it put a lot of money in educational institutions. And then what Joe Biden them was doing, calling out the states that had kept money from those land grant colleges, black HBCUs and saying y'all been stealing from them colleges from ye for years. It makes a difference, man. So, you know, it goes with the territory, but the education, the camaraderie, the experience that you're going to get, you can deal with a rough dorm. You ain't, and then if you call, you get an honors dorm. You can deal with a rough Stop acting like Dominican right now. No, no. I don't, I'm, acting, no, no I'm acting like American Baptist right no, now. Whoever. You Briggs can, Hall was, was a whole. And. I go back now. I don't even recognize it. Uh, outside. they made improvements. Oh, they made. Thank okay. you. Thank you. They made. Dude, but 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 was your education any less because your dorm was so yes, janky? Yes, no, I could not wasn't. focus because I was so <laughs> traumatized by my dorm room that I went to class. It's a disparage. Are you paying attention? Nah, man. Do you know where I had to sleep last night? <laughs> and wait a minute, my buddy told me when we pulled up on the campus, he pulled. He said, "Keith, I don't want you to be disappointed." I was disappointed to the point that your favorite pastor. Ooh. Dr. Demetrius Williams. Yes. His first day down, mm -hmm. he got on the next bus that morning and came back and enrolled at UWM. It's not for everyone. And I, I said, well, I stayed. That. I stayed. I did it's a year. Not it's not for tough. everyone. It's tough. Now, there's all these benefits that you get from it. That's exactly what I said. Okay. But, you know, and, and, and it, it, you know, and quite frankly, it toughens you up. Stop acting like I don't a wuss. Be tough. I want to be wuss. <laughs> like, I want to be soft. <laughs> I don't want to be wuss. I want to be soft. Oh, I gotta go. I don't want the pressure being hard. <laughs> tough. You know, I just, just don't want to. Um, I started watching oh Branded from the start, from the beginning last night. I, you know what? I didn't realize I had that book. Oh, see, watch it. Oh, let me settle. Let me settle. And we on a break. <laughs> no, oh, no, you know, oh, yeah, we got to use the phone. Go. I just said it to make you mad. <laughs> I just said it to make you mad. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> Every day I had to fight. <laughs> prove my love. <laughs> I got to prove my love. I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> well, listen to the community boys. We're gonna take a break. I got to go cuss Michelle out. We'll be right back. <laughs> uh, uh.
Milwaukee, we are about to enter one of the most important election seasons of our lives. 2024 is going to be pivotal. Here at WNOV, we work to ensure that our listeners are informed, knowledgeable, and engaged. On Tuesday, April 2nd, tune in from 3 to 8 p.m. for another edition of Election Central. Hear from candidates, discuss ballot referendums, and get real-time election updates and report problems throughout the course of the day. We are ready, and you should be too. Election Central on WNOV 860 AM 106.5 FM, sponsored by Souls to the Pulse. Milwaukee, this is Michelle Bryant, your host to Say Something Real. When President Joe Biden wanted to talk to Milwaukee voters, he called WNOV. And welcome uh, President Biden to Milwaukee and to WNOV. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. I had a great event downtown and I'm at the headquarters now. And uh, we're feeling really good. It's a great day. We have a lot of volunteers. We have a thousand volunteers going out here in, in Wisconsin, out of Milwaukee in particular. So we are ready to roll in Wisconsin. And I'll tell you what, God love you. <laughs> we Wisconsin, we win it all. For up-to-date election information, keep it locked on WNOV, 860 AM, 106.5 FM. The Marcus Performing Arts Center presents Momix Alice, April 11th in Eline Hall. Inspired by Alice in Wonderland, the ballet and dance performance blends illusion, acrobatics, magic, and whimsy. Momix Alice fills the stage with a marvelously dizzying flow of physical activities and illusions amid expansive artful projections. Per the Wall Street Journal, join the dazzling company on a mind-bending adventure as Alice encounters time-honored characters, including the undulating caterpillar, a lobster, Quadrille, Frenzy White Rabbits, A Mad Queen of Hearts, and a variety of other surprises. Filled with visual splendor and startling creative movement, Alice reveals that nothing in Moment's world is as it seems. For more information and tickets, you can go to MarcusCenter.org. That's MarcusCenter.org. I am Alder Woman Lele A. Cogs, and I have the honor of serving Milwaukee's 6th District with fierce advocacy, innovation, and purpose. Whether it is investing in neighborhoods with the Alert Neighbor Program, the extension of MLK Drive into downtown, the neighborhood walks, or investing in our youth through the creation of programs like Girls' Day at City Hall, we have achieved so much, yet there is still more work to be done. Vote Tuesday, April 2nd, Lele A. Cogs for 6th District Alder Woman so that we can continue to build a better Milwaukee together. Authorized and paid for by friends of Lele Cogs, Drashia Cogs, Treasurer. WNOV 860 and W293CX 106.5 Milwaukee. Listen, everybody. Listen, I'm good now. Listen, everybody. Listen, I'm good now.
Inside Community Voice on WNOV 860 AM and 106.5 FM with your host, Keith Harris. Welcome back. Callers, you were a patient, but we hadn't seen Michelle in a week, so we had to get it in. Um, so it's good to have her back. Um, let's just real quickly again. Um, hmm. So is it Easter or Resurrection? It's resurrection. It's resurrection. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know, I think I think the whole thing Easter comes from you know the whole it's Easter pagan. egg. It's you pagan. Know, it's a, yeah. It's the whole pagan thing. But. It's it's um it's renewal. Mm-hmm. It's spring. But the I the I, the the interesting thing was all three Abraham. I mentioned this last week. All three Abrahamic religions uh, were celebrating as Ramadan, <clears throat> Passover. And then the Lenten Easter season. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think more and more about it um, in terms of what it is that we celebrate or what we commemorate um, on Resurrection Sunday. Um, that's 2,000 years. But I was at Good Friday service, and I'm telling you, Jesus took a beating. Yeah. Man, they, yeah. boy, you talking about, who man. And, yeah. and it seems like the more graphic we could be in the womb. Yeah how he was born. I got all of that, man. But, um, and then for me, I look at it from, um, and I know there's some people disagree with me. I always look at it from a political lens Uh and uh, what was going on with Jesus and and what that represents. And uh, somebody said, you know, um, you wouldn't wear a, um, a lynching tree around your neck. Uh So they said, so when you wear the cross, you know, what does that mean? I know we, the importance of the cross to Christianity, Christianity, I just want, I worry about us getting to the point where it becomes almost idolatry because it is an object. Yeah. Um, There is one particular group, I'm not going to call their names, Jimmy Swagger Ministries, that (laughs) um, they have this whole thing about the cross. Well, and I know it's the Christ on the cross, dude, not the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the cross is something that man made. Oh, and it was a it was a tool like the lynching tree. It yeah. was a tool. It was government terrorism. Yeah, and there was a reason why you were publicly crucified. And yeah. anybody who ever saw Spartacus saw when they crucified everybody, yeah. they left them on the road. So when you went in to Rome, yeah, you did that little trip, and you see all those folks. Yeah, all those folks who are sitting there hanging, you know, on the cross. So. It is the Christ on the cross and what that looks like. I understand a lot. You can blame Constantine for doing Easter and for doing Christmas. Um, But we're so programmed now. It's just kind of hard to uh, to, to see the world any differently. So, yeah, that is true. So would you eat at the, uh, did you eat? No, I didn't eat out there. Um, You know, I came, uh, and did what I had to do, you know. I had to play for artists. Okay. Uh, it was just, you know, the, for me, I'm on my weight loss journey. Okay. So I don't eat when I work. Oh, uh, yeah. Cause I, if I would have ate, cause it was smelling good. And if I would have ate, I'd have been stretched out on the keyboard. It'd, it'd have been over. I'd have been asleep. I had to cover at Tabernacle when um, uh, Dr. Darius Butler was the pastor there. Yeah. And they did two services. And he said, Keith. Um, what do you want for breakfast? I said, when you serve him breakfast, he <laughs> said, between the services. Said, no, not to me, you're not, because uh-huh. you're not going to have an 11 o'clock speaker. Mm-mm. I'll be face down on your couch. <laughs> don't be slumbering. <laughs> slumbering, man. It's just, I don't eat. Welcome, yeah. How you doing, sir? Hey, Vanessa. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Frank. How you doing, sir? What's your last name, Frank? Harris. Hey, Frank Harris. I know Vanessa. She's Johnson, Johnson Keys. <laughs> We've known each other since, since forever. Long time. Long time. Long time. Back in the days when I was playing basketball, you was trying to play. You already said trying to play. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> you hear that? Uh-oh. We're going to take shots, Carly. Shots fired. I, I can take it from her. But, but, but that's a good point, too. I can take it from her, too. I'm a, wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Long time. 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 Long time.
you know, it is a big ball game tonight. So, you know, the, you, it was right on time. Iowa, yeah. 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 I've been watching the women more than I've been watching the men, other yeah. than Marquette, Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, but the women, man, they're they, awesome. They're all, man, yeah. those young ladies can play. They got, they got some skills. Yeah, yeah, they got some serious skills. And and I and, and the thing about women, they're still playing basketball. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean, like all the cutting, yeah. picking, yeah. defense, all that. Yeah. Those we we depend on our physical ability. Yeah, I feel bad for that dude though. Giannis dunked on the other night. Oh, that was so like. <laughs> Oh no, dude, get out the way. Hey, what, what, I mean, but he know better. Like obviously he better. didn't. Well, he tried. He, yeah, <laughs> well he found out. Uh, you in a poster now, dude. Yeah, doc, you found forever. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he found out gonna, that day. He ain't gonna be able to live that one back. No, oh. man. No, that was just so awesome. Of course, what first of all, he's like what, six four, six yeah. five. That was a problem. He couldn't jump. And then he made, give him a, give him credit for trying. But as anybody know, if you play on the playground, the last thing you want to do is be in a poster. Oh, yeah. You don't want to be in a poster, man. You You can't get that back. Yeah, man. (laughs) You know, Tyrone Glue is a great coach. What does he remember for? Getting done by Allen Iverson. (laughs) And Allen Iverson stepping on him. Yeah, Yeah. you know, great coach. When you say Tyrone Glue, is that the dude that Allen Iverson did? Oh, man. So, anyway, we have the good folks here with us from North Cotton Neighborhood House. And uh, here to talk about a national holiday. Yes, yes, sir. Remember we started? It wasn't a national holiday. Not at all. We're talking about Juneteenth Day. Just so. Oh, man. I'm, I might be recognized in the uh, parade this year. Oh, I was kidding awesome. Tony when he was here the last time. That is probably the longest parade in Juneteenth history. Yeah. Yes. That parade. <laughs> out, we, we're in the middle. We're in the middle front. We were done. I was back at my workstation, my other job, and we were right up on King Drive at Burlock. And that parade was still it's coming. Still so then I said, I'm going to walk down to Bader. Parade is still coming. Yeah. I don't know. But I think what it was, was it became community and people wanted to be a part of it. Absolutely. And that said something about the great job you all doing there at North Cotton Terms. So what can we expect this year? Juneteenth. Well, this year, some of the same. Um, we're looking to have over 100 vendors sign up. Um, coming from all over the United States, a um, lot of vendors as far as Texas, Utah, because they know for 53 years we've been putting on one of the longest run Juneteenth festivals. So we're really looking for a, a rich, diverse um, group of culture, food, vegan food for those individuals who don't want the fried fish or the barbecue, just a little something for everybody to enjoy the festival and this, again, is a family event. It's about the whole community. It's about our culture, our history. And just like our slogan this year is our history, our culture, our village, for everybody to take part in this and bring this festival to the magnificent thing it is for going on for 53 years. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> The college I was working at, uh, one of the alum, Freddie Carter, had come back with his wife. Fred had played about two years in Milwaukee. And so his wife is from DC. So she said, uh, we lived in Milwaukee. And she said, what is that thing y'all do? When y'all shut down the street and y'all got like a hundred thousand people. I said, oh, that's Juneteenth day. <clears throat> she said, yeah. I said, but you know, what's really significant is where we hold Juneteenth was the heart of our community. Yes. Third street slash MLK. That was kind of it. And the fact that now you include Garfield Park, well, I'm sorry, Rose Park. Uh, but that was such a talk about our village. You know, that was one of our gathering places, you yes, know, Garfield absolutely. Park back in the day. Uh, and so this idea, I like the idea of village and community. It's also history, too, right? Absolutely. Right. And again, and Frank will talk a little bit more about this. We couldn't do such a large magnitude of event without our volunteers. Um, and his role would, and Bader's role with creating a, a safe place for volunteers to volunteer in the different support areas is really what makes this festival what it is. And Frank, if you want to talk a little bit about the volunteers and what we're looking for. Oh, hello. My name is Frank Harris. Um, I work for Bader Philanthropies. I'm a neighborhood engagement coordinator. Um, we partner with uh, Northcott Neighborhood House 
to put on Juneteenth Day. And we're looking for about 100 volunteers. Um, volunteers, it takes volunteers to do everything from setting up to taking down to walking the streets to really parade vendors. We need volunteers for everything for every um, area that we have going on uh, from the start of it to the finish of it. Uh, without volunteers, this event with this many people wouldn't be able to happen um, because we couldn't, <laughs> we, we just need the people. Uh, we can't do it by ourselves. So that's why we're calling on at least a hundred people to volunteer, to donate their time um, from the start to the finish. You know, whatever you sign up for, whatever area you sign up for, uh, be accountable for that. Um, because this is something that's been going on since I was a little boy. I can remember when it was from Burley all the way to North Avenue, you know, and, um, and it was just fun. I just remember every year going to Juneteenth, um, like that was just some a highlight of my, you know, summer. But now, as I'm an adult, I want to be a part of it, and I just want to pull whoever I can in to be a part of it with me. And I think your uh, great recovery from COVID, because in 2020 we could not do it. Uh, there were some folks who did kind of um, abbreviated, small kind of acknowledgement there on King Drive. But um, it has recovered the crowds. I mean, when you stand on Burley and you look down that hill and you see all those folks going down the center street on uh, King Drive. It's, it's just an, it's a marvelous picture. And, you know, good thing, um, older people are coming back. Yeah. Absolutely. At one point, you know, I would be down there, but older people are coming back. Absolutely. And I think um, highlighting to be able to have a senior zone for our seniors to be able to get the resources they need, the health screenings, relax on the tent, hear the kind of music they like to hear, um, our veteran zone is new, getting supportive services for our vets. You know, we're really trying to cater, at, like I said, as a village for everybody who wants to have a, take a part in something to celebrate our history, they can be down there. The kids zone is the most wonderful thing, which I, I did that's spearheaded by um, Bader to make sure that the kids have a place that they're not run over in the crowd where the parents are walking. And it's just their area petting zoo, carnival games, prizes they can win. It's just really a safe place for them to enjoy themselves. And we're expanding with our teen zone and really reaching out to the teens to say, what what do you want to see down here? A lot of time the adults and the youth workers we kind of put something together for them. And it's really not something that entertains them throughout the festival like we do for the kids zone. So we're really, you know, if you are a vendor, if you got specific services to a target population, you can bend down there. If you're just a community resource agency, we love to have you. All the resources that we can get to support our families and the community and the residents around Milwaukee is, is what we want, and we want you there. Um, now is the time because it's the early bird special. You could save $50. It's $225 for vendors if you got a truck, $325. So we're hoping to get as many vendors in you know why the early bird special it ends on april 30th uh any entertainment any entertainment other than us people watching <laughs> <Entertainment, laughs> that could be yes. very entertaining <laughs> when you just see because well, that's why i love all african people all over the world because when we bring our swag and style it varies oh my god I yeah well you know always like, uh wnov part of uh, the area with entertainment as well as 98.3, you know, with the main stage. And also, like I said, with the targeted areas for the young people, the kids zone, senior zone, veteran zone, they have their own special entertainment. Mr. And, and Mrs. Mr. And Mrs. Mr. and Ms. Juneteenth. They will be there as, as a part of the pageant. Uh, the and whole explain court. that because people don't, they just think it's more than just a, uh, beauty popularity contest right no it is not i mean this right here the, the the pageant is an event for young men and women to showcase their talents um they do an essay it's really about them shining the best that they can be for winning these scholarships so um we we hope that if you have young people 
Um, we have a junior and a Mr. and Mrs. So it's for the smaller kids, ages 5 to 12, and then for the older kids, 13 and up, to be a part of the pageant. They're taking applications now. If you need more information, call, you can call Northcott at 414-372-3770. So again, it's really about the community. And as Frank had talked about, about these volunteers, we couldn't do kids zone. We couldn't do veteran zone, senior zone, or the teen zone without our volunteers. And especially, as he was saying, the number one is our parade. You know, um, the footprints of Juneteenth have changed. We, you know, we are from Center Street and we go all the way down to Concordia. So that's blocks and blocks. So I tell people, get your walking shoes on because you're going to be walking um, if you want to take part and to see the whole festival. So it's all right if you started Burlight going down that hill, coming back up that hill. <laughs> it's <laughs> rough, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to make your way. But <laughs> make your way back it, up there. It, yeah. It's worth it. It is. I, I, I just, um, I think. And, and and as we, um, I don't know what it's going to look like in terms of how we market here, but I would think that it would be great to talk about the history of that day. There are things out there that people don't even realize you do. Um, <clears throat> uh, the red drink was something that came up in when they did the original Juneteenth. And then you hear this term, Sunday's best. Mm -hmm. Sunday best came from Juneteenth because on that day, people put on their Sunday best Absolutely. to go out to celebrate their freedom from enslavement. Now, we know that Juneteenth did not actually end slavery. That's why the education point is it was the last group to find out Corpus Crispy? Crispy. It was down Texas. in southern Texas uh, that they were the last to find out. Because I didn't realize Texas was the last state yeah. to outlaw enslavement. Wow. And uh, and that was part of why they were fighting with Mexico. They wanted to remain like a, a slave nation. Um, so it got complicated. But then when the folks found out about it, uh, but again, it was just the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed. Mm. Uh, the war had ended, but that did not end slavery. Slavery was ended by the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. So. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you all coming in, Vanessa. Thank you for starting the interview off by telling people the inadequacy of my game. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> Where'd you go to high school? You're at North. North Division. Absolutely. Right. Blue Devil. And not only was she an athlete, mm. she was a scholar. Really? That is true. That is very, oh, man. Wow. That is true. Yeah, we, uh, um, I, I was very fortunate to grow up in the church that I grew up in. A yeah. lot of talented people at that church. I mean, Sorry. you name it, whether it was music, academics, it was because it was so many, you know, after a while. It's like New York City. You, it's big. And we were big. We knew a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of talented people. She was one of them. Wow. So you mean to tell me that she would teach you and then put hands on you on the court? <laughs> wow. That, that was weird. <laughs> Doc, <laughs> Ooh, that's pressure. Man, that's man, pressure right there. Man, it was just Who like she teach you. Oh man, she she yeah. I mean, it was. Uh, I was thinking about that, you know, as we just got off. We're in March Madness, and how much um, I thought to myself, had I been a little bit more devoted to playing basketball, but I love playing basketball as much as I love singing in the choir. Absolutely, which was crazy. Yeah, Absolutely. I love yeah. playing ball. Oh man, love yeah. it. Yeah. All right, y'all got something else? Yeah, uh, the freedom ball. Freedom ball. It is June fourteenth. Yes. Um, it's going. It's going to be at the Harley Davidson Museum. Okay. Okay. Um, we were at the zoo last year. Yeah, we were asking vendors and um, people to uh, purchase tables. We got about thirty-five tables, fifteen hundred dollars a table. Okay. Um, that is uh some of the money that we use towards the pageant right um in terms of the scholarship scholarship right. yeah so we can um, take care of the kids it, it was a very nice event thank you and Appreciate thank it. you all for having us but it was very nice and now i got now i know if we're coming back that i can i, I did pretty good with my little african garb though yeah i did absolutely. okay i did all right i mean it was uh i was over at i think these folks are from mali it's, they're over in the uh, that Silver Mill Mall. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The whole coming to American outfit on. Man. <laughs> 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 well, you know, with Black Panther came out, you know, black people were dressing up in African garb, and my buddy posted on Facebook him and his family all in African garb, 
And I and I posted back like, yeah, well, me and my wife, we wore our sleigh clothes. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a beautiful event to to see, and and um, <clears throat> my wife had a dress made for it. Yeah. Just just it's one of those, and it's interesting. It's formal, but it's our indigenous formalness, you yes. know, where we would dress up in those beautiful colors and oh my God, who who would not want to be a descendant of African people? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we 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 should take great pride in in what we in spite of, in spite of people taking your native tongue, in spite of people taking your indigenous culture, in spite of people telling you you're not good enough, in spite of people saying you're less than, you know. Not only do we we live, we we more we more than survive. We 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 make um we make beauty. I mean, we are making lemonade out of lemons sometimes. The original Absolutely. people. Oh, the Everything original came from us, <laughs> right? And I think we need to be mindful of that. And I tell young people, you need to understand what's on the inside of you, right? Your ancestors are on the inside of you. They created so much beauty on the inside of you. Tap into that, you know, and then. Uh, I, you know, there are people growing up as Christians who will say, well, it's ancestor worship. No, it's not. You honor. The Bible says honor, you know, your mother and father, right? So we honor those people who came before us, the sacrifices they made, the shoulders that we stand on. Um, I, I just, you know, you have to go back. Wasn't that, that was Jan Kemp, I think the originals, mm -hmm. Mac Weddle. Yeah. Who, who else was? Oh, don't get me to trying to okay. think of everybody that was a part of Margaret Hennessy. It was Hennessey. quite a few. That she came in to talk start. about that yeah. last year. Yeah. How we how we did that. And the fact that it's the longest running continuous. Absolutely. And and you go and you and they showed a map. I think it was 1968 when somewhere first started and how uh, you had all these spots in the South, Texas, especially. And there was one little spot up north. That was us. And so the people who had that vision, look, uh, I'm going to say this. I brag about it. I couldn't think of any better place to grow up when I was a kid than Milwaukee. I'm the same way. Born and bred here. And, you know, like you talked about how we grew up playing basketball on the playground and just, you know, going from park to park. And we just enjoyed each other's company. Right. You know, we're very competitive, but everybody enjoyed each other's company. And, Getting back to Juneteenth and this intergenerational process of our seniors and our young people being able to coexist and enjoy each other's company and learn from each other. Because as seniors, we try to learn from our young people, too, with technology and everything. And it's just a way that we need to do to build our culture up. So. And our villages was based on a circle, you know, not a hierarchy. You had hierarchy, but you also had the circle. And I think that that's where we get. So when you start talking about intergenerational, once we're in a circle, those things kind of meld away. And we think about the common things that we share um, with folks. So, yeah, we, we got to have. Um, I, I have children's church and I get more out of children's church than the kids do because I'm listening to what they're talking about once they start talking, you know, because when they become teenagers, they kind of. I don't want to talk, but I think I think that's it. And I think I love the concept of the village. I just think because we are. Absolutely. Yeah. How many years have you been at Bader? I've been at Bader. I volunteered there for five. Okay. But I've been there for about a year now. All right. My good two of my good buddies over there, JT and yeah, yeah, and uh, Frankie Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Frankie live across the street from each other. So I live right on Fifth Street. Okay. Right down, like, I'm 3371, right down the street. So I'm over at Bader for an event one time. Look at this dude. That dude look familiar to me. Is that? It was Frankie. Yeah. I'm yeah. from the 3700 block of 6th Street. Oh, okay. So I've been over there all my life. All your life. Okay. So okay. I remember, you know, when uh, the the side of the building had the mural of the woman with the flowing hair. Right. And next, you know, we built it into our headquarters. Okay. So I volunteered for there for five years and um, I always had a passion to work there full time. And so when they called me, I was driving semi trucks. Okay. And I came off the road to work there. Yeah. So I can help in the community. And so when you go back into, I told, I was in 53212 my whole childhood. Yes, sir. I didn't live any place but 53212. It wasn't until my mom bought a house my sophomore year in college that we moved out of one, two, mm -hmm. but I was in one, two all my life. And I hear everybody talking about Oh six. My church was in Oh six, but <laughs> you know, one, two, that was the spot, man. Yeah. You were in one, two. Oh five. Oh five. 
Okay. North Avenue. Oh, <laughs> Lloyd Street, Twenty Street. <laughs> oh, where'd you go to high school? Oh, I went to Marshall. Went, I went to, Marshall. to Marshall. Oh, Marshall. Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now some they they changed all the names to the MPS schools now. So it's I think it's like a middle school and a high school collab together. It used to be a middle school high school when we were in school. Yeah. I wanted to go there, but my mother right. sent me over to Black Tech. Parkman. Parkman. Yeah, no, man. I didn't want to go there. Parkman was, man, we were blacker than black at Parkman, man. I mean, if you, everybody was black at Parkman. Right. We had 12 white students. We never saw them in class. There was all in the social worker's office. You know, we never, but Parkman was so black. And then to go from Parkman to an all white environment, culture shock. Yeah. Culture shock. Well, appreciate you all. You are going to be back. Well, we thank you. We thank appreciate you. the opportunity. Um, again, call 414-372-3770. And you got JuneteenthMKE.com. That's the uh, website. It was under construction last week, but we're going to have it all the way up and running within the next couple of weeks. Excellent. If people want to make contributions, can they? Yep, absolutely. Right. They can make sponsorship. We got sponsorship packages available. Just give us a call at North Cottage. Oh, one quick question. Can... Parade going to be televising it? Yes. Yes. TMJ4. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Something so, happened we... <laughs> the first year where, I th- who was it? Was it, was it <laughs> Shannon? But she was trying to explain why it had started on time. <laughs> There, there's a reason you listen to a community voice. I'll take a break. There always is. Always <laughs> like, oh, great. Well, you know, black people are. <laughs> Hey, Milwaukee, this is Mandela Barnes. You probably know me as the former lieutenant governor, but I'm also a proud product of Milwaukee Public Schools and a proud son of a Milwaukee Public School teacher. And that's why I'm supporting Yes for MPS. We have strong public schools. We have strong communities. We have a strong workforce. And everyone can succeed. For years, we've seen Republicans in the legislature continue to fail Milwaukee students by withholding resources that force devastating cuts to our schools. This referendum is our chance to stand up for our kids and provide them with the opportunities they deserve and say yes to their futures when so many have told them no. If the referendum fails, consequences for our children, our parents, our educators, and for the future of our city will be dire. So let's do our part, Milwaukee. Join me in voting yes for MPS on April 2nd. Paid for by the Vote Yes for MPS Committee. Saturday, April 6th, and Sunday, April 7th, the Life Center brings to you something for the modern-day believers, the stage play, Resurrection. Get ready for an electrifying play that will leave you on the edge of your seats. Tickets are just $10 for children, $20 for adults, and $40 for families of four. To purchase tickets and for more information, please call 414-306-2107. That's 414-306-2107. Or visit Mario Dickens Creations at 76. 76- 25 West Lisbon Avenue. Attention, music lovers. Are you ready for an unforgettable night? Come out to Shank Hall, 1434 North Farwell Avenue for the Divas of Soul tribute featuring the talent Christopher's Project with guest vocalist Samira, Jess Becker, Mel Sapo Spears, and Sandra B. Doors open at 6 p.m. Sunday, April 14th. Tickets are just $25 in advance and $30 at the door. Don't miss out on this unforgettable night of soul. Grab your tickets now. Now, for more information, call 414-276-7288. That's 414-276-7288. Well, I've grown tired of
The Center for Teaching Entrepreneurship presents its third annual Big Head Soiree Thursday, May 16th at the Marcus Performing Arts Center in the Bradley Pavilion. I'm Andrea Williams and I'll be your host for this spectacular event. It's designed to salute the co-founder, Miss Radonna Rogers, as she loved to wear big hats and this is one way we honor her. We will also celebrate and recognize the accomplishments of Milwaukee's leaders in entrepreneurial ventures. TTE was founded with the mission in mind to help young people understand business, financial literacy, and themselves and how they can find their way into the marketplace and be productive citizens. We have found a great way to educate, stimulate, and advance what we're doing within this community. So ladies, this is the time to wear your big hat and guys, your stylish fedora. You will be treated to a delectable dinner and the sounds of Soul Serious starting at 5.30. The program will begin at 7 with more entertainment and the awards program. Tickets are just $75. Go to Eventbrite using VHS24 or call 414-788-8104. That's 414-788-8104. This event will kick off the spring season so don't miss it this event is sponsored by wisconsin black chamber of commerce u.s bank brewers community foundation and BizStar. you're listening to wnov 860 and w293 cx 106.5 milwaukee But like you dropped the domino, oh, <laughs> you slammed the domino. Man. That was game. <laughs> game. It was over. Black people tear up a table when I'm they win the game. Oh my like, god! Bam! It was like, oh okay. And if you don't know that it's coming, it was scared of heba jeebies oh, about you. So you play balls? Oh no, I'm terrible at that. Now Uno. Uno, oh man. Now Uno, I'm the champ at Uno. Oh, Uno, my sister, she at Uno because she can count. Oh yeah. See, I can't count. Man, yeah, Uno no skill, man. It's also remembering what numbers came You're up skilled. and what's still yeah. in the head, right in the deck, right? That's yeah. what card. That's why I'm not good at playing. I don't play cards because you got to remember what's been played already. Yeah, you know. Now, board games, I can't play chess, but checkers. Oh man, oh, man. flying kings, man. I'm I'm all over chess the board. Is too cerebral for me, man. Yeah, man. I can't. Yeah. That's too much. Thinking. I was watching this um this movie on. Uh, well, it actually was a series on Apple. It was the queen something, but it was this uh, female chess player. Mm. And you find out, well, obviously, chess is really about strategy. Show us checkers. I don't know why people try to minimize checkers. But uh, chess is really about strategy and being, what, two, three moves ahead? Yeah. Kind of looking down the road and and the sexism that she faced, Carvey, as a female (laughs) in a a predominantly uh, uh, male-dominated um, feel you know i was thinking though like in gospel music yeah the majority of musicians i'm talking about keyboarders yeah, are usually are male. male yeah so the female becomes the exception yeah because i i just recently saw some some musicians that are female that's playing organ and keyboards that are excellent 
And it's like, wow, okay. Well, who was playing for Sunday school? Who was playing for the youth choir? Yeah. It was women. Yeah. Yeah. Mother Wallace and Mother, yeah. All okay. of these other mothers. And right. Things. Yeah. 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 That's true. There was a young lady. She fell out with my sister because she used to play for Sunday school and my sister was kind of could just do one. So I, I that I didn't I never thought about it. Uh it's like um two instruments. Most of it, but certainly, it's rare to see a female drummer. Yeah, very. Even though rare. there's some cold female drummers out there. Yeah, and then it's rare to see a female bass player. Yeah, even though one of the greatest alive is playing right over at yeah, Holy Redeemer, Redeemer yeah. Miss Kathy Harris. Yeah, she's a problem. Oh my God! You know, first time I met Kathy, uh, Thomas Watley. Yeah, Thomas. Uh, yes, we were doing a choir reunion, and yeah. so uh, for the first time, we're gonna add a bass player. Yeah, and so uh, one guy had a suggestion of someone, and then Thomas came up to me. He said, "Keith, I got the perfect bass player for yeah. you." Okay, Thomas, hook, 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 hook us up, man, and it's for free. Yeah. Hook us up. So uh, we're doing the rehearsal. You've been in Metropolitan, yeah. so I can see here on the east door, this, I'm going to say little girl, no disrespect, because yeah. she's a grown woman. Yeah. This little girl, the amp and the and the bass was bigger than bigger her. Bigger than her, yeah. yeah. So don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. And not only can she roll on the bass. Oh, she can sing. You heard her sing? Oh, my God. Yeah, Her she, album is. Oh. Actually, to tell you the truth, since we're speaking about her album, I did. Some songs off of her album that she released for her book. Okay. And um, so the a theme song off her album, I did. Um, so yeah. She sang at my wedding. Yeah, Kathy. She, she kinda she kinda got like the Mavis staples, you know, type feel, man. She got I, I can hear uh I'm usually listening to all of it, right? Yeah. And when I'm talking about when I hear a choir, but I'm, I'm particularly tuned in to the band. Yeah. And uh, what that sound is. Yeah. And then I get even more particular because now I'm listening for keyboards yeah. and the bass. Yeah. And her bass um, is <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. She got, she she most definitely has. Everybody's touch. family can say. Oh, yeah. Everybody's yeah. family. And can her, say. her nephews, okay. TJ and Allen. Okay. Uh, TJ play keyboard and Allen plays bass. Okay. And wow, these guys are incredible. We were, um, uh, my brother uh, was over yesterday. We were down. My uh, my niece had never seen a, like a a, a, a turntable. Mm. And so we were downstairs and we played um, Miles Davis, uh, Kind of Blue. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and and it's amazing because the the few vinyls I have, I, there was a bookstore in Evanston. I used to go and get these rare records, but there was a guy I grew up with who um, had early onset dementia. But he was mm. cognizant enough to say, "Look, I'm gonna start giving away my stuff." Yeah. Well, he'd been buying albums mm. since, who man, we were in like high school. Mm. So I have albums that are over 50 years old wow that are in pristine condition oh wow. no pops no scratch no work wow right and, and um and i got it i got it from him and i don't know why i started talking about vinyl mm. because i think we were talking oh and so my brother was saying that he thought because we had a brothers johnson oh with the one with stomp on it yeah and my brother he he ain't lying he wore the grooves off of that wow. coming to the house he played that right and so he was saying that he thought that um, Stanley Clark was mm -hmm. like the best bass player ever. Mm. This is Stanley Clark, but Marcus Miller? Oh, Marcus Miller. Was Nathan like, East? Man, there was a cat named Pino that plays with D'Angelo. Okay. White guy. That guy is awesome, man. And who was... Um, What's her name? I cannot pronounce her name. Uh, Angula. She has the uh, African sounding name. Oh, that wow. one playing bass. Really? Oh, God. Wow, man, man. And then you know, if you like, like, uh, I love to hear Ron Carter play the stand up bass. Oh yeah. Uh, but oh, yeah, right. that's what I'm listening for. And then I'm also then listening for. Um, I used to be a choir director, and so anybody that's ever directed a choir understand it's the totality of what you're doing. Yes, sir. So it's not just the choir, it's also what the musicians are doing. Yeah. And 
But the one thing growing up in Metropolitan that we always had was three part harmony. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I mean, it, it's uh, I was watching a documentary on the Eagles. And if you ever listen to the Eagles the music, it's great. Listen, listen to those vocals. Wow. And they worked hard. Yeah. In making sure that those vocals are um, they're blended. Yeah. And I think that that's what people miss about harmony. It's yeah. blended sound. Yeah. Because nowadays, man, it's so <clears throat> computerized and 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 you can just go in and you can stack. And then if you miss the note, then it would automatically fix it for you. Back then, you had to really, really sing and know the notes. Mm -hmm. And, and that's it what was blending and sounding great. That's what makes Amazing Grace. Yes. When you listen to that album. Yes. Man. They, it was all done in one take with yep. the exception. They started one song. They had to start over. I remember that. Yeah. Right. I and and so and anybody's ever sang in a choir? Now, I've never done a live recording, but I understand the live recordings, they will stop. Yep. Right? They yep. don't work through it. They'll yep. stop and start it all over again yep. one time. And yep. that was at the beginning of a song. And that, for me, I've done the live recording with the Wisconsin State Youth Choir. Robert Williams in mm -hmm. Western Peace. He's still alive? No, he passed away. Okay. And in Wisconsin State Youth Choir. So we did the recording at Evangelistic Evangelistic Temple off of Hopkins. <laughs> Bishop Blake. Flakes, I'm gonna say. And then um, so we did the recording there and we had to do like numerous takes because you know, kept messing up the alto section would mess up. And so we had the guy outside in the truck and then send word back in. And we had to retake, I think that night. We did like 150 takes. And that's what makes recording, like when the guy's yeah. in the studio and you're going, oh, they don't come in and do that song in one take. Yeah. And, I mean, to the point, and depending on who your producer is, yeah. you know, they'll have you work to exhaustion. Yeah. I mean, trying to trying to get the, the best take. every, yeah. But to be able to blend that sound, um, which means that you need to be able to hear. Yeah. And I think some people sing and don't hear other people. Tone does. Tone deaf means you, you're not on the note, right? Well, yeah. Well, if you're not able to hear other people, then you won't be able to hear if your note is wrong. Okay. So if you sing in harmony, mm -hmm. you'll have to know, okay, if I'm singing soprano, my soprano note is not lining up to, with the alto note. Okay. So, and then that's all part of tone deaf too, because then if you're not able to hear the key and you sing it off key, it's like, ooh. Yeah, I was telling somebody, um, uh, put me in the, the key of Q. Oh man, <laughs> that's completely off the board. <laughs> put me a Q, and I'm gonna go. I have to find out what is my what is my natural uh voice in terms of then the, the musical piece of it. Um, I, I always joke about uh, Bishop Daryl Hines and said, You ever met a person who talked in key? Yeah, see, uh, but all of us would ever talk in key, okay, like um. You know, I, I actually have a friend that, that actually have a perfect pitch so he can tell you, you know, what your voice is in. So even at church, for us as a musician, you know, when the preacher started tuning up, and instead of going up down the key, you have to know where he is. So you can call it right out F when we go right to F or A flat or F sharp because every voice has a key. So even now I'm talking now, it's it's just crazy how it's keys, but yeah. And I love, I love when preacher closing and he just take you up. Oh yeah. Every time next point, yeah, different. We're going up an octave. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. We're going yeah. up blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah. And that's why they travel yeah. with their musicians. Yep, yeah, because their musicians know. Them. Which one of the coldest people no one talks about, but you really should if you have not heard any of his music. PJ Morton. Oh my God. His and I remember him when he was on the organ with his dad. Yeah. And, Bishop uh, Paul. Yeah. And then when it then it, how did he start it? Is there anybody? And there we go. Yeah, and there go. So um, yeah. I just uh watched uh Marcus Cosby preach uh for Brian Carter in Houston. And I'm talking about somebody. I guess this is why he teaches preaching. Yeah. Cause man, but he took it up every time he make a different point. Go up a different, like a half step. Yeah, half step up. And, and, now, I don't know if you ever heard of this cat named Todd Hall. Yeah. But that cat can preach. 
Yeah. Ooh. Well, he he was out. He used to come out, and I think he still does. That is Aaron Hall's brother. That's Aaron Hall's brother. He's a prophet. Yeah, that cat is incredible. But he'd be up a long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that cat long, wouldn't it? Oh, man. We had a, a guy, uh, may he rest in peace, um, um, Pastor Elder Dennis Joseph Ward. And Dennis Joseph Ward would preach. Oh, my God. He'd be about 55. Now, again, this is a Baptist minister in the holiness. You, oh, you get God. that one. Yes. So uh, he get. But you know what? I sit there for that hour. Yeah. Because at the end. Yeah. He going to go. It was worth the wait. I take uh, my guy here, Brother Harris. Yeah. His pastor, yeah, his bishop, yeah, go. that's one of the whoa. yeah, and not only, not only it, it, it's not just the performance, you know, because that's what we do, yeah. the profundity of his message. Because I'm in the substance, as, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, so when I'm listening to because there's some guys out there who really sound good, and, they and then we word. go through our homiletic kind yeah. of dissecting of what they talked about, yeah. Like, dude, you got a sweet tune, but that was an empty message. There's no, there's no meat. You know right. what I mean? It's 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 like what we call. You know, some people got that real profound message. Mm -hmm. Some people just got to, you know, they got to, and uh, and they can tune you real good. Well, that's the other thing. Just because you can sing, don't mean you call to preach. There you go. And a lot you of were these about that earlier. Yeah, there you, you go. You out I told you. Yeah, the yeah. funny thing was, uh, I was joking about how um, I went to American Baptist College. Uh, shout out to all the alum of American Baptist College, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, but one day, because we still have pay phones, oh, yeah. uh, my mom would call. Mm. And um, so one day, because uh, they hated me, uh, <laughs> they go, Paris, oh, man. Paris, you got a phone call, man. I said, okay, so I'm walking halfway to the phone. And then my boy, I know, I'm going to call his name, too, Joe Bush. He's out in New York now. Hmm. I think it's your calling. Oh, dude. Oh, man. That's cold. So God called me on a pay phone to tell me I was called to preach. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way you like, could get me. Keith? <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Guess what you get ready to do? This is the Lord. On the pay phone, huh? You, you could be in a dream. You know, uh, now I, I I I I don't I don't want him to get my attention um like he got Bishop Daryl Hines' attention. I don't need to get hit by lightning, but but more than a phone call. So anyway, uh yeah, Carby, they said that they called me. The Lord called me on the payphone, dude. You already know what a payphone is, right? Dude, have you seen payphone? Quarters. Quarters, yeah. 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 Okay. All right, gotta call it. The rotary? Yeah. Oh man, oh, it'll man. take you forever to. Yeah. <laughs> they went from metal, and then we went to the princess phone. Uh, we get to, to, to that. I was watching somebody the other day. This whole idea of a cell phone is just so crazy, man. Man, it's you don't remember when we was riding in the car with the big cable box on our ear as the cell phone? <laughs> it was a big cable Miami box. box. Hello, Miami Vice. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Hello. It was a big cable box. Call it up to the program. <laughs> Hey, good, good morning to you. you. Now, you know I couldn't help but to chime in when I... Yes, you could. Preach, brother. Yes, you could, brother. What, how could I help it? I'm uh, like, Joe, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like... Like Jeremiah. Like in the valley. Uh -huh. no, I'm, I'm a mule falling in the valley right now to get out and see what... Most of the people that talk about hooping preachers really can't hoop themselves or they, right. they, 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 feel, they feel some kind of way slighted because when it comes down to the singing preacher... Uh, it takes a it takes a little heart until you condition yourself to just go there. Now the baddest preacher I would say right now would have to be Jasper Williams with substance saying. and uh, being his homiletics. Yeah. And then Leroy Elliott yeah. in Chicago is profound, yeah. along with yeah. Donald Parson. Uh, I like you know I like I like I like I like him the holiness preacher. Yeah. Uh, but we had one of the coldest preachers right here in the city. Bless his soul. His name was Terrence Sims. Oh yeah, the oh, late yeah. Terrence Sims, American Baptist and Bishop. Right now, now yeah, Butler, Butler right was there. one of the baddest preachers uh, this side of Texas. Yeah, uh, McVicker was pretty good. Steve McVicker. Uh, I, I think he can. I, I think he did our preachers. His, 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 his uncle. But uh, uh, no, you we, know, ain't, we ain't gonna go. We ain't gonna go that far. 
John Wesley well, McVicker that, is one of the cold. Oh, ho, ho, Meech, Meech, Meech. John Wesley yeah. McVicker is one of the coldest preachers, not just in Milwaukee in America. John Wesley hey, McVicker. You're talking can about preach. homiletics, open. I'm you talking about that. homiletics. I'm talking about ending. I'm talking man, about beginning. Hey, Come on, okay, man. all right. I'm not going to argue with you. I know how that you sausage know, is made. Big, oh, big, no. McVicker got the big church, so we're going to get it. No, no, no. I've heard him, dude. It ain't, it ain't the size of the church. It, it really is. Ain't. You got that man can preach. That man got some substance. Man, man. got substance and can preach. And he's a voracious you, you reader. If, if you know anything, Mike Vicker before he had that stroke, man, a young boy coming out of coming out of college, man. Them boys was rough, man. Oh, yeah, Steve, you, because I think Steve and Terrence, they were they were classmates. They were together. Yeah. They were together, along with Mark over at uh, New Paradise. Oh, yeah. I forgot all about Mark. Yeah, Mark. Is he yeah. back yeah. in the city? Yeah, he's back in the city. Okay. No, what I'm saying is that, and look, I was at American Baptist, so I can talk from experience, and and I don't think it's changed that much because Dr. Harris is really, he's trying to change the focus. When I was at at, at when I was at American Baptist, my classmates were more concerned about preaching, right, the art of preaching, and then because it was American Baptist College and it was Nashville, that means that we heard some of the greatest preachers in America would come through the college and preach at our chapel. So what well, we, what I people, spent a hold lot on, of time let me, in the nasty deal. So Listen, when I spent a lot of time in the nasty deal, right? So I when, when we, and, and you know that there's great preachers down there, right? But, oh, yeah. but, but there's people who could, um, one of our college legends, uh, the late Oscar Miles, hot dog, was one of the greatest, most profound preachers you, I mean, well, he was a great preacher. He was still young. Well, um, a lot of those guys mimic. Listen, a lot of those guys mimic the C.L. Franklin. Uh, uh, you know, good luck on that. What do you mean? Because uh, very few people could do what C.L. Franklin did. Very few people could do what Jasper Williams does. Well, you got to um, look. Well, well, those are that, uh, Jasper is a protege of C.L. Right, but very so, few people were able to pull it like that, and and to be able hey, to pull it. A, a Leroy Elliott ain't half stepping now. Oh, um, down in uh, Chicago at Apostolic. Yeah, Leroy Elliott. That oh. cat can go. Le- and Leroy and Elliott, and or is it uh, Ellis? I did, I did no, drug, Elliott. I did Elliot. his okay. drug and alcohol program two years in a row over there. So you got to be a heavyweight. You got to have some yeah. substance. You got to be good to even fool with them kind of guys. Right, because there's some dudes who we would not consider great that. speakers who have built incredible houses. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give you one, James Meeks. Because, I mean, yeah, Meeks is profound, yeah, but That's if you're just true. talking about I, how I want to sound as a preacher, I don't want to sound like him. Yeah. But you see the house? He's built the biggest church yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Because he had that, his charisma went beyond his style. Even but, but you, Bill But Winston. you have to look at something too, brother. When it comes to building the houses, the way they build them now, they're not building them the way that they build them back in the day. A lot of this stuff is not, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's like I like to say, it's a, a progressive Christianity. See, the church done lost his mind. Just like when Moses went up on the hill and he went up on he went up into the mountain mm-hmm. and that the church was down on the ground and they said, Where he at? We're the pastor. Yeah. They said they called his brother and said, Build us a church. The church went to partying and kicking it and got real progressive down there. Moses came down and threw the thing down and got mad. That's what's happening right now. Jesus taking too long to get back, and the church done went crazy. He went, well, he let me say crazy. something about this in terms of, and I know that there's uh, one particular church that people are hating on right now in the city. And what that church represents is culturally where its demographic is. Yeah. When, when we looked at these great cathedrals we were built, that was, that was European, right? That's what they did. They built these incredible cathedrals. Young people are not going to church wanting to see cathedrals. Young people, and I hate to put it this way, but I'm going to just keep it 100. You know, when you go into a lot of places now, someone said to me the reason why it's dark in the congregation. I think, I don't know if you were telling me that. So the spotlight is on the stage. The other thing is it kind of looks like a club. And that's okay because it ain't what the church looks like. It's what's being put into those folks once you. So I need to get them there. Yeah. Once I get them there, then it's up to me then to get them to where they need to go yeah. spiritually. So I'm not tripping. It might be a little bit different well, than I'll, what I'm I'll accustomed to. Off. I'll take this off there. I got a question to ask you. Okay. Well, you and, got and my I'll number. Take it off that. You got my number. All right. Right. But I want to just ask you a question so the listeners can hear. Where are we trying to get them spiritually? And then I'll get off the phone. I mean, without this progressive better, liberalism, I, I want to be better people, man. 
It's that simple. No, no, no. no. I want you to be precise. I'm I am being precise. Answer. I want you to be better. No, you're not. You're not. You're not being precise. I am being precise. I want you to because be better you, because you, what you, better you, looks like to Jermaine is going to look different to me. Exactly. It's going to look different to Keith. Yeah. But I'm but getting what better. Do, what about hell? Is, is there certain? Do, do we believe in hell? In we hell? living in hell. No, 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 no. We're not going to use the Jehovah Witness, the Russell Light approach. No, no. I'm just saying that if you look at your life, and here's the, this is part of our slave religion. They got us so focused on the afterlife that we missing this life. Don't get so focused on heaven and hell. Don't get so focused on heaven and hell that you don't realize the hell that you're living in now. You know, so. The hell you living in now. Well, because you you, you have issues with relationships. You have issues with your life. You could have issues with substance abuse. It's all these things. This is why Joel Osteen is so powerful in his message, man, because he's a motivated speaker. People want that. They don't want to hear But if their lives are getting better, but if their lives are getting better, it was just like when people came to Jesus complaining to him about how they were healing uh, healing people in the name of of a policy, healing people in the name of this. He said, I could care less what name they did it in. Did the people get healed? That's the bottom line. Right. Listen, I know what you're saying because Jesus told those disciples if they for me, they can't be against me. I understand that. Right. But when you're crossing bluer lines, it becomes a problem. But that's man, culture, got, man. That ain't spirit. I got away from this, Keith. That, 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 look, look, look. That. You can have the greatest cathedral in the world. I grew up. It's a cathedral, brother. And when you look at, let me just talk about my own life. I know I got to go to a break real quick. Okay, I got When we thing. built Metropolitan, Metropolitan's design was like no other church design they'd ever done before here in the city. And there were people critical because they didn't look like a church. Right. The exactly. church is the people. Exactly. Not the building. Not the building. It yeah. is the people. That is the ecclesia. Yeah. That is the people. Yeah. Right. And so we put so much on this. But if I can get them in the church, now it's up to me then to do what I need to do if they need to be converted, if they need repentance, if they need deliverance, healing salvation but you got to get them there yeah they don't hear the message hard to get saved preach that all right we're gonna take a bar off now you listen to community voice we're up in the last break of the program we'll be right back Get ready, Wisconsin. The Black Child Development Institute is expanding its village statewide. Join us for an unforgettable evening of celebration and empowerment at our gala on Saturday, May 4th, 2024 at the Hilton Milwaukee City Center. Tickets are available for $150 per person and sponsorships are available. Adorn yourself in formal African attire as we celebrate this momentous occasion and the growth of our village. For more information and to purchase tickets, call 414-236-5641 or visit bcdi-wisconsin.org. That is 414-236-5641 or bcdi-wisconsin.org. Don't miss out on this unforgettable event. Together, let's build a brighter future for Wisconsin's children. The Trump economy was a disaster for Black America. He prioritized the wealthy and big business, not us giving them tax breaks while we got left behind. Under Trump, hundreds of thousands of Black Americans lost health insurance in the middle of a pandemic. And don't forget the division, the violence, and disrespect we faced while he was in charge. Now, he's coming after our voting rights. And if he's president again, Trump vowed to be a, quote, dictator who would get revenge. We can't go back. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are working hard for Black America. They sent $1,400 cash relief checks when they were needed most. Our wages are up. We've got millions of new good paying jobs and the cost of insulin is capped at $35 for seniors. There's more to do, but it's clear that on the economy, Black America is getting ahead with President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. I'm Joe Biden, candidate for president. 
and I approve this message. Paid for by Biden for President. Are you or a loved one facing challenges of dementia? It can be a difficult journey, but you don't have to go through it alone. Melanin Minor understands this uphill battle and seeks to be the bridge for information, service, and support for the people of color. Melanin Minded offers various resources to ensure caregivers are equipped with the right tools, knowledge, and help from youth and men's health programs to the Legacy Home Health Services. For more information, please call 972-891-9187. 972-891-9187. Hi, my name is Tamika Vukovic, Co-Executive Director of Wisconsin Voices. Please join Wisconsin Voices every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. We will be focusing on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. WNOV 860 and W293CX 106.5 Milwaukee. As we wind up, I did receive a text. That's a good suggestion. Someone's asked me when was the last time I preached about obedience. Um, and that that's that's an interesting word. And that would be um, an interesting scholar scholarly investigation. I was talking to a, a buddy of mine. He was talking about why he sent his son to Marquette High School. And uh, I pointed out that, uh, well, yeah, it's a Jesuit high school. And one of the operating principles of being a Jesuit is obedience. And so <clears throat> what are we obedient to? Who are we obedient to? Uh, but that, thank you for that suggestion. I appreciate that. I can always appreciate it. Let me thank uh, Michelle. Let me thank Jermaine. Carvey. Debo. Uh, Vanessa and Frank for all being part of the program today. Hey, the good Lord will in the creek don't rise. We hope to talk to everybody tomorrow. And as always, go from this place in peace.